So for five months, she was always um, ahead of the curve in everything she did. And um, we were in this baby group, <clears throat> and everyone there had a baby the same age. And we would go every week, and everyone would put their babies on the floor in a circle. Whether you know, And at first, they're all laying on their backs because they were all, what, eight weeks old at the yeah. time? Yeah. And Emerson was the first one that could roll over. <clears throat> and the first one that could lay on their stomach on her hands. So we went in, remember that time, and you, Steve walked in and put her on her stomach. And everyone was like, oh, and they're all like scrambling around. And I was like, don't do that. No one well, we've been practicing. Yeah. Emerson and I. <laughs> <laughs> I had taken her to her six month checkup in Seattle. And um, at that point, she had gone from the, I think it was like the 98th percentile in height and weight to the maybe. 78th or something. It was a pretty big drop. Um, and she was also, she didn't want to put weight on her legs anymore if you held her up. And she also was doing a thing that I've since met other parents whose kids have gauchets that, or had gauchets that have said they did this where she was doing this thing where she would arch her back in a strange way. Um, and at the time, her pediatrician checked her out and didn't see anything else. And so he had said, you know, at six months, she's starting to eat solid food. She's starting to do different things. Let, you know, he just didn't seem that concerned or um, any red flags. So we just went on our way. And that's when I started to notice she was about seven months old then, that she wasn't really doing what the other babies were doing. And she wasn't so far behind that it was shocking, but she was on the lower end. And she'd always been kind of ahead of the curve. And so... I was getting concerned, not that there was anything seriously wrong, but just starting to feel like something felt off. And, um, you know, everyone around me would say, oh, she's fine, she's fine. Like, babies go at their own pace, and she's fine. But then it was at Halloween, we came to the Cape, and, um, and that was the first time one of her eyes had started turning in. and. Then her clothes seemed loose, so we had thought maybe she's just grown taller. And so, you know, she'd kind of get fat, then thin, thin. And, and then we measured her, and she hadn't grown at all since her six-month checkup. And then I think that's when we got kind of freaked out that something was wrong, but still didn't think it was anything life-threatening, just, you know, if yeah. you don't want anything to be wrong with your baby. And initially I called the pediatrician's office, and... um said, you know, I'm a little concerned about her development. And they said, oh, you know, just come in at nine months. I think they probably get lots of calls from new parents about everything. So then I hung up the phone and then I was thinking, you know, I'm, I'm really, really concerned. So I called again and said, you know, she ha I have to have someone see her. I'm really concerned. So she went to her new pediatrician. I think she was so worried right when she examined her because she was smaller than she should have been. She wasn't putting weight on her feet, and then when she felt, uh, and she was thin, and then when she felt Emerson's abdomen, um, she felt what she thought at the time was a mass, and it was really her spleen and liver um, were very enlarged. The first thing they did was, I think, the ultrasound. Yeah. And the ultrasound tech, I don't know that she was supposed to tell us this, but she told us it wasn't a mass, that it was her spleen and liver. And so to us, we thought, oh, she, she has mono or something, you know, yeah, like we yeah. just didn't. So to us, that was like the biggest relief ever was that it wasn't a mess. So we had this moment of like, even though it wasn't confirmed and we knew we had to wait till it was confirmed, we had a moment of like, oh, OK, everything's going to be OK. Um, and then we were there for about five days and through that time had a lot of testing. So then the oncologist wanted to do a bone marrow biopsy. Um, to check for some other potential blood cancers and things. Um, <clears throat> and then that came back negative. So then when she said potentially leukemia, we had looked up what that meant and we were, again, so, so upset. Then that came back negative and we were so relieved because we were like, oh, great, okay, so she doesn't have cancer. Um, and we just had never heard of a storage disorder. So when they started talking about potentially it was a storage disorder, um, I was actually at first like pretty relieved because I yeah. thought, oh, that doesn't oh, yeah. sound so bad. An enlarged spleen and enlarged liver and thinking she'll take some medicine. Um, <clears throat> and we didn't know what that meant, but they had seen on the bone marrow biopsy what they thought were Gaucher cells. And the geneticist um, 
was the one that saw it. And mm -hmm. they sent say to send the samples out to the Mayo Clinic. So then we had to go home. Um, I don't know how long it was. Was two it two weeks? Week? Two weeks. It was two weeks because at, at towards the end of the two weeks, I emailed the doctor again and said, "Look, you know, I, I know that the Mayo Clinic's very busy, but is there any way we can find out? I mean, it's been two weeks, and at that point, I'm I'm a data hound, so I would, I'd already been reading all the literature. I knew uh, what Gaucher's was. I knew what the different, you know, I knew not what the prognosis for what what Emerson would be, but in Gaucher's has a pretty wide range. And so I had some idea of it could be really, really bad or not so bad. At that point, I thought it could be not so bad. And I decided at that point that until, I'm usually, I usually need to know everything and I need to look everything up, but I decided that until we knew for sure, I didn't want to research anything. So we didn't talk at all about the research you had done. Yeah. yeah. Um, Cause I had looked up something and come across a early on come across a blog and it was by a woman whose child had neiman neiman picks and i started reading it and i was like i just couldn't go there and i didn't even know what um gauchet's was and then when she so when she was diagnosed the genetics doc, the geneticist called us into her office and she gave us the diagnosis and i didn't really know what it meant yeah. but you did I did, but at that time again, there's a range, and so at that time we hadn't we hadn't met a doctor who had a lot of in-depth experience specifically with Gaucher's, and I and at that point, I still believe that there was probably a range, and that it was still possible that there was going to be um, a positive outcome. Well, because if it's um, type one Gaucher's, there's no neurologic involvement, so with enzyme replacement, you can have good results, um, you know, as far as lo longer lifespan and, you know, you can, um, it's less severe. And then, so because we knew she did have neurologic involvement though, yeah. that's when I finally did some research and I, it was pretty awful what I found. And we, um, it never occurred to me that whatever she had, that it would be fatal or that there wouldn't be anything we could do. 